Bruchim Aboyim. The lecture tonight will be on um, a topic that I think we're all interested in to an extent is age. And uh, the secular world is basically obsessed with age and f the secular world basically focuses on the physical and staying young. People, as they get older, they become dejected. Um, it's not something that people look forward to. Uh, on the other hand, we, we religiously see age as a growth, a growth of the mind, and a focus on the spiritual aspects, not the physical aspects of life. And uh, again, learning to connect the physical with the spiritual. And it kind of goes up your body. It's like when you're younger, you're on, focusing, so to speak, on the lower part. And as you get older, it moves it more up to the mind. And the truth of the matter is, the greatest enjoyment a person can have is in his mind, even though we think it's with the body. But when the mind connects to the body, that is the greatest. Greatest torture is mental torture. And as a person gets older and learns how to, so to speak, play the game, how to become better, as we say many times that uh, youth is, met, is wasted on the young. That, and again, it's a matter of growing older and at the same time staying young, staying young in mind, staying young in direction. Now, it's interesting that in the secular world, we idolize people like athletes. Athletes, by the time they're in their 30s, are considered to be over the hill. And people want advice from them. They, they look to them as, 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 as role models. It's, it's very sad. Uh, we know that uh, you, we surely, really should see ourselves as a wine getting better and finer with age. In fact, it's interesting that the gematria, the numerical value of the word in the Hebrew, yayin, of wine, is 70, which is also the numerical value of the word sod, which is secrets, kabbalah, deeper meanings and things. That in order for a person to, if you have a person who's brilliant and 20 years old and a person who's a little slow but he's 60, he has certain advantages, the person who lives 60 years over the person who, who has, is only 20, even though he's a whole lot smarter. Now, in the Torah, there are many references to age, and I thought we'd go over them, because they all have a focus and a reason for them. First mention of age is a baby boy. When he's born, eight days old, he gets a bris, he gets a circumcision. And even an animal that can be brought up for a sacrifice cannot be brought up for a sacrifice until it's at least eight days old, until it's past one Shabbos, one Sabbath. And again, even with animal sacrifices, they have to be, for Passover, it has to be within the first year. There are different things. The paraduma has to be three years old for the cow. There are different ages, again, and all these things have basic meanings, especially in Kabbalah. The next thing that we see dealing with people is uh, what we call a pidyon aben, a um, redeeming of the firstborn son. That's done after 30 days. Again, it becomes the next thing that's mentioned. After that, in Pirkei Avos, it mentions the order of how a person should follow years. The last chapter, in, uh, that's for, last Mishnah in chapter 5, Pirkei Avos, says three years, that, uh, that's when we give a, a boy an ushpizen, when we cut his hair. Um, and again, that's the time, three years old is the time we start learning, teaching a child the Aleph Beis, the Hebrew alphabet. And again, he learns to read. At the age of five, when he's five years old, then we begin to teach him Chumash, the five books of Moses. And again, everything goes back to the Torah, what we call the Chumash. Because um, everything, every law, everything that we know, no matter where, what we're learning, all, always finds its origin back to that. That is the root of the tree. And that's what we start with a child to the age of five after he's been taught to read through the olive bays. Uh, it's interesting that the Gemara in Chulun states that it's the idea of five years, that if you're not successful in anything that you try for five years, then give it up. Try something else. That the Kohanim, that the Levites were trained for five years, and that's where we learn it from, the age of 25 to 30. So again, with the Torah, the Torah gives us advice on every phase of our lives. Ten years, ten years old is when a child should be taught Mishnah. Uh, that's in addition to the Chumash, but the Chumash has become secondary. Chumash, the, the Mishnah, becomes the beginning of what we call the oral tradition. The Chumash is the written Torah. It comes in the scroll, not a letter can be changed. If it is, it becomes invalid. The Mishnah, on the other hand, the oral tradition is something that keeps growing. 
with all the new innovations that we have, electricity, cars, timers, all you know, stoves, all things that we use today, airplanes, what about elevators. There's so many things that don't seem to have any mention in the Torah, but we learn them out from things that are within the Torah, so we learn one from another. And that's called the oral Torah, again, something that we still have today that keeps growing. Um, at age 13, 12 for a young lady, is what we call a time when they reach adulthood in a sense, and they become culpable by the earthly court for their actions. Uh, we know this from Dina's brothers. Dina was the daughter of uh, Leah and of Yaakov, who was taken and raped by Shechem, the prince of the city of Shechem. And uh, when the brothers went to take her back, it says each man took his sword. So we see that a 13-year-old boy who becomes a man at 13 when they refer to them as men. Um, and again, the Rush says, one of the great commentaries on Torah, that this is really what we call halacha Moshe Misenai, a law that was given orally by Moses at Mount Sinai. So even though it's not written, we, we were told by him. Continues and says that 15 years old, at that point, we start teaching a young boy Gemara. The Gemara is a, an elucidation. It's a, a commentary on the Mishnah. The Mishnah was done, so to speak, shorthand. And then you have a small mission, you have pages and pages of Gemara on it that explain it, so it's more in depth. In fact, the word ligmor means to finish. So it completes the Torah, so to speak. And from that we get all of our halachas, all of our laws, and all the, the final decisions based on the Gemara that goes into what we call the Shulchan Aruch, the set table of what we have to do. The uh, Mishnah there also tells us at 18 years old, that's the time for marriage. How do we know that? In the uh, book of Bereshit, the word Adam, man, is mentioned 19 times from the beginning of the book until the naming of Chava, the first woman. So one name, Adam, is for who his name, what his name was. And the other 18 allude to the fact that a man does not become complete until he marries again at the age of 18. The next year that is mentioned is when a person is 20. At 20 years, a person pursues his livelihood. Um, again, that's from 18 to 20. We see even today that many young men in religious circles will spend two years in Kolo learning so that by the time they reach 20, so to speak, they give them a couple of years to then become, move into the world and to start to earn a livelihood. Also, it's interesting that we see that the culpability by heaven even though on the earthly court, if someone is 13 years old, a young man, he now becomes responsible for his actions. The heavenly court makes a person culpable by the, from the age of 20 on. That's why the Jews in the desert, those from the age of 20 on, died in the desert for the sin of the spies. Those below that age went into the land of Israel. They were, con they were considered to be minors, so to speak. In fact, um, we see that even with the sons of Noah, they were 100, under 100 purposely because that at that time people lived longer and that 100 was co compared to the 20 of what we have nowadays of being culpable from the age of 20 on. The Gomorrah condition states an interesting thing. At 20 his bones begin to rot. What does that mean? So it means that there's a breakdown of morality and spiritual strength that once a person hits 20. Um, 20 year olds think that they know quite a bit and they're mature. It's not until you hit your 30s you realize what an idiot you were. In fact, it says that 20-year-olds think their parents are quite, quite off the wall and don't know anything until they hit their 30s and wonder how they got so smart all of a sudden. Uh, it's an it's a interesting age, but it's important. Many times we have our children in our 20s because when we have children, it kind of forces us to change because of them. The cement hasn't hardened, even though we're physically mature. We're not mentally mature yet. So we can still change, and we change for our children. Got one of the ways that God fools us to get better. 30 years old is considered the age of full strength. And um, we know that the Levium, the Levites, began to serve in the temple at the age of 30. And they served from the age of 30 to 50. Again, the, also at the strength of the full strength to influence others, uh, teaching and guiding. So at the age of 30, you now get past the 20s, and now you're in a much more mature place and be able to help others as well, not just yourself. The age of 40, 
called the age of Bina, understanding. Understanding means learning one thing from another. Uh, I was give the example kind of like catching a football and being able to run with it. Uh, so catching it is fine, but if you can run with it, you understand something. And that's the idea of Bina. Also to judge, that a judge has to be, again, at the age of 40 to be able to understand. And uh, we know that Moshe Rabbeinu uh, was uh, ruled, he judged the Jewish people in the desert for 40 years. And the Gemara Nadarim says that a student really doesn't understand his teacher until the age of 40, 40 years. In fact, when Moshe Rabbeinu, before he dies, he says to the people, God did not give you a heart to know, eyes to see, or ears to hear until today, until the 40 years that they were now on the level of being able to understand what he had to say to them. Rav Khan Kalman said what, when he was 40, he said what was missing in all of his learning at the age of 40, simply to be a Jew, to understand that, that no matter what he had learned before, he really didn't understand and bring it together until he was his 40. 50 is the year, is called the time of eights of, of advice. The Levium no longer served uh, that, and didn't do heavy work. That what, at the age of 50, you give advice because of the experience that you have and the wisdom. Now, all of a sudden, you've been there and done it. And looking back on things, you can talk to people about it. 60 is called the age of zikna. The age of zikna is the word of shekana chachma, that you've acquired wisdom. And not only that, we believe that the greatest punishment a person can have is karis, which means premature death in a sense, especially of the soul. It's only up to the age of 60. Once a person is past 60, he's no longer part of karis. And also, 60 alludes to the six days of the week. And now a person coming into his 70th year begins to prepare for Shabbos, again, for his journey into the next world, for this trip that he's going to take for eternity. 70 is called, the amazingly, the age of seva. Of, uh, seva really means to be uh, seva tova, to be satisfied. Uh, again, it's the age of seva is also white hair. We know that Rabbi, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, when he was made into a nuss, he was 18 years old in the Haggadah. And they have been convinced Shem and Shadim, like 70 years old. It says he had 18 strands of white hair in his beard, so he looked older. Again, it's the idea of white. So it's also a time of respect. Uh, also a time of tshuva. Um, as Governor Melech said, again, a time of seva tova, of good, good, of, of good satisfaction. Again, the white hair that a person gets makes a person know the clock's ticking that he needs to get his act together because it, it's, there's not that much time left. The 80, 80 is time the time of the, for Gvura, which is interesting again. Strength. Of course, it's not physical. It's talking about a spiritual strength that, uh, that a person is now at 80 already. He's at a point of where he's close to God and moving in that direction. 90, it's called the Suach, stooped over. Again, he's closer to death, but the word Suach is also the word Siach, meaning prayer that uh, at this age already a person is in a position to be starting to guard his speech, so very important as he comes closer and closer to this final eternity that he's going to reach. It's interesting at the age of 100, it says that he is ke'ilo meis as if he was dead, which means that ve'avor is the next word, which means same as the word avera, because when a person is 100, sinning is not too easy anymore. So he's kind of protected. So he becomes a person who has been saved on that basis. Now, it's interesting in the Torah, it doesn't mention that many ages of people. It does mention Avram Bino at the age of 75, who had made that covenant with God at the bris, ben Absurim, the walking between the parts, the animals, when he was told that Jews would be slave for 430 years. By the way, it was the year 2018 in the Jewish calendar. We're coming in that secular as well. But it mentions the names, the ages of Moshe and Aaron of 80 and 83. It's amazing. Why? Because we don't believe that you ever retire. There's no such thing as going to an old age home of, of, of just waiting for the angel of death to come. We don't believe in rusting out. We believe in burning out. That we see that their greatest achievements were done when they reached the age of 75, 80, and Moshe Rabbeinu another 40 years, uh, Abba Rabbeinu for another 100 was, was still doing, and we don't know how long we have. The famous story of Rabbi Yiskov Bardichev. He was walking late at night. He passed the shoemaker's shop, and he saw that light was on. And he walked in. The shoemaker was working. And he said, you're working so late? He says, as long as the candle's still burning, why shouldn't I keep doing something? 
and he walked out and he understood as long as the candle inside of us still burns, we have what to do. That a person doesn't think about not, you need to be productive. But God lets you know, if people say about being over the hill, it's great, you don't have to pedal. So I don't know what the concern about is. It gets much easier. And uh, again, so, but there's also an important thing, again, even with, it mentions Yitzhak being married at the age of 40, but he lived to 180 really is relative to the 20 if you take the percentages of when he got married. So it still follows that sort of order. But in Torah, there are laws that follow age. Uh, 13 year, years old is an is a age of culpability, but still he has to have two pubic hairs to be physically mature, and there are certain laws about this. But the key becomes is that not everybody has those two pubic hairs when they're 13. There is a difference between physical maturity and mental maturity. And what we as parents need to know is that not everybody grows the same way, that some plants take longer to grow. That doesn't mean they don't, they're not beautiful and they don't fill their, 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 their uh, designation in life. That the key becomes is keep watering them, keep taking care of them, keep them, giving their fertilizer. And you never know that one day that may be the most beautiful tree in your garden, the one that took the longest to bloom. And that's what we need to know. So don't judge the world by age unless it's for law. But otherwise, have patience with all those people and let everybody bloom the way that they need to. God bless and thank you for coming.